the Rocky Mountains. Thousands of meters above sea level, this mountain range stretches from northern BC all the way down to New Mexico and the United States. Formed when two subcontinents smashed into each other millions of years ago, they have been left scarred and chiseled by several ice ages as glaciers cut away deep, wide valleys, leaving the majestic sharp peaks, jagged ridges, and high mountain cliffs that are so iconic to this range. Ever since I started backpacking, I've been wanting to get into the backcountry of the Rockies. And in the summer of 2021, I finally did. The first part of this trip consisted of the journey from the coast to the Rockies. Sarah and I decided to take two days to get there and stop off at an old friend's place. Francois and I worked together at a pet store many years ago. Now, he manages a bison farm, where he lives alone with his dog Hank. When we visited him in the past, he gave us a tour of the ranch, and we got to bottle feed a baby bison that had been abandoned by its mother. This time, we brought the fixing for burgers and we cooked on the grill, had some beers, and caught up. The issue that we have is water because our, our biggest problem is, is that all, in the back, all our water is in the front. All our big lakes, mm -hmm. we just have like puddles in the back. So, you know, what I mean, when we go back there with like excavators and we just dig the big ponds out and we just allow it to fill over a winter type thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then they might have water for that next winter or for the summer when they're on that, on that range. After staying the night, we got up and headed to Revelstoke to meet up with James and Janice, who were staying in Vernon the night before. After grabbing a bite to eat, we began our trek to the Rockies. Something I often come back to in these videos is a loss of scale. Losing any sort of recognition of height, size, and distance because something is just so massive that you no longer have anything to compare it to in your memory reserves. Entering the Rockies and moving towards Canmore, this feeling of unknowing size was stronger than I'd ever experienced. There isn't much else to say about driving through this landscape that could even begin to convey the emotions I felt that day. After driving through Canmore, we took a back road to Spray Lakes Provincial Park, where we camped at a site just a few kilometers down the road from the trailhead into Assiniboine. Camping on the side of this lake was the perfect appetizer to the next five days of being surrounded by the mighty Rockies. The crackle of the fire settled us in for the evening. That night, I fell asleep to the haunting sounds of loons and bats. This is the point where I should probably mention that we were in the backcountry from June 29th to July 3rd, 2021, during the peak of the heat dome event in southern PC that claimed nearly 600 lives, led to the hottest temperature ever recorded in Canada three days in a row, and destroyed the village of Lynn. Of course, at the time we had no idea all that was going on. But we were ourselves also struggling in days with highs of 32 degrees Celsius at 2,000 meters in the Alpine with no shade. On our first day, when we got up and out of our tents, it was already pushing 25 degrees at 8 a.m. All right, here we are at the Mount Shark Trailhead. Getting all packed up and ready to head out into the mountains. It's currently 11 a.m. and about 27 degrees out. It's fucking hot. It's fucking hot. And sexy. <laughs> Look, at these Look at these mountains. Look, I might might need a minute alone. <laughs> these mountains. Look at how mountain that mountain is over there. There's so much mountain over there. It's happening. After so many months of planning and a collective 10 to 12 hours on the phone figuring out exactly where we're going and what we're doing. 
The first few kilometers of the hike started off relatively flat. We would be starting in Spray Lakes Provincial Park and hiking into Banff, where we would be spending our first night. This first day was 13 kilometers and relatively flat because we were primarily walking up a massive U-shaped glacial valley. The heat was something I don't think any of us were prepared for. It was made worse by the constant beating of the sun, two kilometers less atmosphere to protect us, minimal shade, and large packs on our backs, eliminating one of the main heat radiators of our bodies. At nine kilometers in, we stopped at an empty campsite and spent some time cooling off at a river. Luckily, since it was super hot, there was lots of snowmelt and therefore lots of opportunities to wet ourselves down. Even with that, I definitely did not drink enough water that day and certainly had heat exhaustion by the time we made it to camp. The campsite we stayed at the first night was largely unremarkable, just a site tucked away in the trees. However, on the main trail, just a couple minutes away, was a landscape that I had only ever seen in nature documentaries. This place was just within the border of Banff National Park, and the Rockies wanted to make sure that we knew where we were. It was easy to imagine seeing a grizzly bear or herd of elk wandering through the lower parts of this valley. For a while, we sat on a platform built in front of the ranger station and enjoyed the beauty of it all, watching hundreds of thousands of non-biting bugs hover over top the shrubbery. At this point, the sun was low enough that the air had begun to cool off to a manageable temperature. It's experiences like these that remind me of how important it is to get out of my routine and into unpredictable places. You don't have to go far to find something that will take your breath away. After some time, we decided to follow a path down into the bottom of the valley, and the views got even more beautiful as we got a chance to see the imposing mountains on both sides. As we descended into the valley, the temperature dropped quickly. We could feel the cold air collecting in the bottom, much in the same way water flows and collects at the lowest point. In fact, there was a moderately sized river flowing through the middle of the valley as well, after about six hours of struggling through the intense heat, this cool, gentle, awe-inspiring scene was just the pick-me-up we needed for the following day. All right, here we are, beginning of day two. I'm getting my day two hair. You're getting your day two hair? Shot. <laughs> All the better. Uh, so yeah, hopefully by the end of the day, we'll be in the meadows. We've got a mostly flat day again today, but the heat, we'll see how it goes. It's about quarter to nine now, so yeah. Let's uh, see what wonders await us on the other side. Oh, spider web again. By 9 a.m., it was already pushing mid 20 degrees. It was gonna be another hot one. For the first couple hours of our hike, we were walking up through the valley that we appreciated the night before. As we approached noon and the temperature was reaching the low 30s, we were just about to begin the 300 meter ascent over Assiniboine Pass. This is the view looking down the valley we had spent the last two days hiking up. Due to the heat, our progress was slow. The slope in most places wasn't super intense, but the heat was draining. At the very least, on this day Sarah and I were much more diligent about drinking our water, and that was when I realized that I did not drink enough the day before, because I was sweating significantly more. This also happened to be the day that the mosquitoes decided to arrive. 
The mosquitoes were bad the first night, for sure. But something about this day was just the right time for all the larvae to metamorphosize into adults and begin their blitzkrieg on all things warm-blooded. Anytime we stopped, they immediately swarmed us en masse. And in many of these clips, you'll be able to see them flying past the camera. Finally, after grinding up the hill in the 30 degree heat, we reached Assiniboine Pass. We're officially back in BC. The border between BC and Alberta, as well as Banff National Park and Assiniboine Provincial Park. We have returned to the promised land. And as James mentions here, the Great Divide. This is the Great Divide then. Water this way goes to the Pacific, water this way goes to Hudson's Bay. After a break in the shade and providing the local bloodsuckers a much deserved snack, we descended down into BC and got our first look at Assiniboine Mountain. At 3,618 meters, it is the fourth highest mountain in Alberta, just one meter lower than Mount Alberta, which, of course, is the third highest mountain. Admittedly, the peak of Assiniboine sits on the border of BC and Alberta, and it is only the 36th highest mountain in BC. Although, considering the tens of thousands of mountains we have in BC, that's still quite the achievement. Can mountains achieve? Do they have dreams? Now back in BC, we enter the meadows of more glacier-carved valleys. Around us, some mountains have had the tops shaved off by glaciers, creating nice, rounded bumps. The next day, we'd be climbing one of them called the Nublet, which you can see here. After a couple more hours of walking through the meadows, we got to the Magog Lake campground. We ate some food, set up camp, and made our blood sacrifice to the insect horde, before heading down to the lake to enjoy the view of Assiniboine and go for a swim. There were small icebergs breaking off the glacier across the lake, but it was so hot we had to get in, and to our surprise, it was a very pleasant temperature, at least in the upper few feet. A very refreshing dip after a very hot day. To make it even better, there weren't any mosquitoes this far away from the shrubbery either. All right, James, where are we going? I'm gonna swim to the little iceberg over there. There's little icebergs in this lake <laughs> coming off that uh, glacier. It's like, it's gotta be like 28, 29 degrees out. The water's not as bad as you would think. Get the shark now. <laughs> Those are pretty big rocks. <laughs> Gonna have a, a cold dip on the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are we just gonna go touch it? Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to. Just gonna go touch it and come back. That's it underneath, I guess. Eh? Yeah. Ready? Nope. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey. Yeah. Look, look over here. Whoa. Okay. Here we go. Huh. This is not even the same. Whoa. Whoa. Oh no, I broke it. Is Dan on there? Oh. 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 Oh no! Oh no, it's flipping! <laughs> no! Oh, oh this sucks! <laughs> oh. <Woo. laughs> well. Oh! Oh! Well, is it gonna flip? It's so cold you can't swim in these arctic waters. 
I'm Bear Grylls. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at the camera crew behind you. <laughs> that night, we sat on some chairs that someone had made from rocks as I tried to capture time lapse of the setting sun again. This shot was taken just before 10 p.m. The sky was light until almost midnight, but we went to bed long before that. Click the link on the screen for the second half of our Assiniboine trip, where we ascend the Nublet, hike through Wonder Pass, and marvel at the bluest lake I have ever seen. <laughs>